A freshman college student and somehow hopeless romantic embarks on a mission to find a mystery girl to complete his love life. Hey guys, welcome back to Flix Recap. My name is Luke Pelletier and today we're covering the 2000 comedy, A Hundred Girls. Before we start, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and of course subscribe to Flix Recap if you dig the breakdown. And, as a disclaimer, this video includes my own personal commentary and analysis. It's not a substitute for the film itself. Links to purchase the film are in the description below. Let's get it going. The scene is set in college. Here we meet our main character, Matthew, a freshman student gaining ground in his new environment. He's standing outside the girl's dormitory, imagining that his one true love is among the 100 girls he's gazing at. One evening, he's leaving a party on campus when he's joined in the elevator by another girl. He can only hear her voice. Her face is covered by a mountain of laundry she's carrying. Right at that moment, there's a power outage. Matthew's now stuck in the elevator with the mystery girl. The darkness gives them unhinged courage, and they both get into a little more than bantering. They start with a tongue tango and end with dessert. Matthew then falls asleep, due to the rapacious nature of oxytocin bonding. When he wakes up, the mystery girl has already left the elevator and all he's left with is a pair of her panties. Determined to find her, Matthew begins his search for the mystery girl. Since his younger days, Matthew's always been socially awkward with the ladies. So I highly doubt he's gonna be able to finesse trying to figure out who some chick is based on her thong. Anyways, Matthew confides in his friend Rod about his mind-blowing encounter, and Rod is far from impressed, and Matthew views him to be a little misogynistic. Rod casually mentions that Matthew should use the panties he's picked and find the matching bra. Matthew has an epiphany and sets his plans in motion. Rod's concerned since they're not allowed in the girls' dormitory. He doesn't care at all about the privacy of other women, it's more of just what would happen if he were caught there. Matthew's idea is to create fake maintenance problems and get called in as the hero who saves the day. This way, he's able to visit the dorms as much as he possibly can. Clearly, there's no limit on what Matthew would do to meet the love of his life. His first plan involves throwing a bag full of mice into a vent. Soon thereafter, a rodent manifestation prompts the ladies to call for an exterminator. Matthew uses this opportunity to visit some of the girls' rooms to trace the matching underwear. While on his quest, Matthew walks in on Crick and Patty. Crick's trying to get off, but Patty's having none of it. When matters escalate, Matthew barges in and verbally roasts Crick. Matthew takes drastic action and decides to pinch Crick's hooters. Not one to back down from a fight, Crick also does the same to Matthew. We get a little purple nurple tit for tat. Patty decides to help Matthew with a soothing bomb. Matthew takes a chance and wants to get to know Patty. Although Patty makes the first move, Matthew resists and they end up talking for the rest of the evening. Matthew catches up with Rod on how his plans are going. Matthew has successfully created several fake scenarios that keep him inside the girls' dorm while he searches for the inner wear. He also meets Cynthia for the first time. Cynthia is drop-dead gorgeous, and Matthew's always tongue-tied when she's around. One day, when Matthew is busy fixing the girls' television in the common room, he's ambushed by Eileen into playing strip foosball. Matthew ends up losing and strips down to his birthday suit. Needless to say, the ladies are impressed by what he's packing. Matthew updates Rod on his game of foosball. Although he has unconventional ideologies and both male and female anatomies, Rod could care less. And here is another problem that Matthew creates. The air conditioning within the girls' dormitory is spoiled. Matthew and Rod are enjoying the view from their side as he awaits to be called to fix the problem. Rod merely views the ladies as objects, and Matthew sees things like any other human. He's gone so far as to observe each of the ladies' quirky personality traits. He explains to Rod that Saturday nights are the best to be in the dorms because all the ladies are frolicking out and about. Here, we are also introduced to Dora, the only girl who does not go out on Saturday night. As Matthew describes, he's seen better faces than Dora's on National Geographic. Matthew and Rod even try attending a women's studies class to get some insight into how women think and truly feel. One afternoon, while he's browsing in one of the dorms, Wendy walks into the room, and Matthew's worried that her sixth sense might pick up on his presence. And sure enough, she finds Matthew hiding in the bathroom and uses the air freshener to spray his face. Wendy realizes that she knows Matthew. Matthew confides in Wendy about his encounter in the elevator, and now he's on a quest to find the girl of his dreams. 
Wendy, an absolute sucker for matchmaking, steps in to help Matthew score the love of his life. After a little trial and error, Matthew finally meets the girl who he thinks he loves. His bubble is quickly burst when he finds out that she's deaf. Alright, if you've made it this far, you're kicking back and enjoying the video. Now would be a great time to subscribe to Flix Recap. Subscribing is absolutely free, and it helps me bring you even more dope content. Okay, plug over. Back to the recap. Matthew waits every Thursday in the dark, hoping to finally meet the mystery girl. Oh my god. Days turn into weeks, and he's disheartened. One night, Wendy finds him and invites him over for some comfort food. They make good conversation over a nice dinner, and Wendy offers to dress Matthew up as a woman and have him go under the alias Francesca. Wendy and Francesca join the girls outside, and during the conversation, Matthew realizes that women are just as obnoxious as men. Matthew's even more frustrated. Wendy suggests that he tries to get to know each girl. This will help him get the vibe that he's looking for. Matthew makes a stunning revelation. It's easier to talk to Cynthia while he's disguised as Francesca. He comes to the conclusion that there is less at stake if he approaches her dressed as a woman. Eileen and Matthew go head-to-head -head on another foosball game. Things get heated and Matthew scores without resistance. Eileen accuses him of cheating and they get into an altercation. Matthew realizes that there are no clear rules between men or women and even raises his observation during the class. On Saturday night, Matthew goes looking for Dora. He finds her on the rooftop and is concerned that no one is taking action. Dora is stressed because she's a combination of ugly and smart. Matthew talks her into keeping her feet planted on the ground and they head back to her room and enjoy a book together. That's probably me. Ready to jump off the nearest deck, but also willing to chill inside and read a good book. Rod also tries to make a few moves on Francesca, not realizing that it's Matthew in disguise. Or maybe he is realizing, and that's kind of why. Matthew decides to test Rod, and he realizes that men and women approach romantic gymnastics differently. One evening, Matthew finds Patty enjoying a bowl of cereal. He can't help but notice her aura and presence. His shared moment with Patty is short-lived when Crick walks in on Matthew and Patty talking. Things start to head south, Crick tries to ambush Matthew, and Matthew's quick on the up and up, and staples Crick's hair to the floor, buying him and Patty some time to run and hide. The cat's out of the bag when Patty's Ben Wahballs fall to the floor and expose their location. They're saved in the nick of time when another Ben Wahball makes Crick trip and fall. One heart-thumping encounter later, the chemistry is electric, and Matthew and Patty end up getting to know each other's waistline. Time flies by, and nearly half a semester later, Matthew hasn't had a breakthrough. When he's just about to give up, the mystery girl finds him and coldly dismisses him, asking not to be looked for. Matthew's determined to see his plans through. He chases after her, but loses her shortly after. Matthew tells Wendy about the mystery girl not liking him. Matthew and Wendy end up talking about their childhood. They both realize that their parents have been trying to turn them into people who they're not. And this is the revelation that Matthew has been seeking. With finals getting closer, Matthew takes drastic measures and creates a gender war through foosball. He teams up with Eileen and battles Crick and friends to a game. Matthew has a breakthrough and realizes that he and Eileen make fantastic teammates. Matthew and Eileen get to talking about role models and parental influences that affect how he treats women. Matthew hatches a plot to visit Patty, but disguised as Francesca. He tries to find out what Patty thinks of Matthew. She brushes the subject off. Crick is also in the room and starts to go after Patty because he believes she's fooling around with Matt. Francesca intervenes, but Crick is too strong, forcing Francesca to bite his tongue off. Damn, that's cold. With the term coming to a close, Matthew plans to take a different turn when he decides to give a heartfelt speech outside the girls' dorm. He narrates his encounter in the elevator and how he pretended to be a maintenance man to get into their dorm. The girls are swept off their feet by his charm, and soon enough, they're all fighting to be the mystery girl. Thinking that it's the girl who never came out of her room, he rushes to see her. She tells him that it's Patty. Matthew goes to see Patty, but she kicks him out. Patty's far from interested in forming any kind of romantic relationship. Not one to give up, Matthew reports Crick for sexual assault, and other girls come forward. Wendy talks to Matthew and comes out of the closet, while he sets up a date between Rod and Dora. Great, I would get stuck with Rod. That's awesome. Matthew finally decides to give his relationship with Patty one last try, and even a hundred girls can't stop Matthew from going after the girl of his dreams. 
Even though this movie makes it very clear that his dreams only last like 12 to 15 minutes, have some sweat, but very little agility, are totally prone to oxytocin bonding, and happen totally by chance. It's just a dumb encounter. This guy's got no game. He's got no skill. He just sets actually kind of awesome situations up for himself. I, I, I don't know. I got very mixed feelings about this whole ruse. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next recap. Until next time.